Well met. Once again, mighty quester, I do hope you're feeling vicious, voracious, and voluptuous as I welcome you back to another Baroness cloning episode of Disciples 2, the Legions of the Damned campaign. Now, uh, what's just happened is I've just ended my turn. It was ridiculously exciting and nothing happened, essentially. Apart from this, lumbering off, who appears to be uh, heading in the direction of Demon lands. So, I think what we'll have to do is Lord of my Cygnus his ass back to uh, Primitive Giant Land. So let's. Yee, I think we can do this. I can't see it being any big problem. Let's give it a go. I can't remember if I've shown you these guys. The isolated tribes of giants that have few encounters with other species spawn these. Lovely guys. I'm pretty sure his face isn't an actual skull. I'm pretty sure that's just a, a big skull that covers his face. It might not be. It might not be. We never know. Um, you'd be hard pressed finding a skull that big to fit over his head. Let's face it. So enough bumbling. I think we can maybe get out of this without any damage at all. Woot. That was nice. Uh, Deba just about pipping him to the post in terms of the initiative as the primitive giant only has 30. So that was splendid for us. We have a skeleton champion talisman, which is rather nice. An ancient relic, a staff of holiness. What the bloody hell did that do? Should have really checked. Heals 30 hit points. Ah, that's not too bad. We do need the mana to go with that though, which is uh, uh, not so bad on this level because we do have some life mana there. So that's a thing to consider. We might even end up giving that to Raxus and then he can cast using the staff. In terms of what we're doing now with Mango, I'm slightly tempted to take on this city of Salonia. Be reason being is because these giants have been throwing themselves willy-nilly at it, so let's give it a go and hopefully we'll find some weakened forces within. Um, well, they're not weakened, but they certainly don't pose that much of a threat to us, so can Mango... No, that's not enough to kill him, sadly, because of that city uh, defense bonus. But we should be able to wear down this guy. Yeah, so it's going to be a slight problem because they're going to, he's going to get quite a lot of damage, our demonologist on the back there. Despite his red hat of power. As he's going to get a hit from the mage leader. Oh, he does take down the marksman though, so that is very good. So, I don't think we've got anything to worry about from for him for the rest of this battle. Uh, let's take on the squire just so he doesn't get a chance to have another swing at our anti paladins. And goodbye, Renard. He will not be missed. Although you be it will, because it is quite magnificent. Does he have any stuff for us? No. That's disgraceful. Anyway, uh, we'll maybe check out what's inside Salonia in the next turn, unless they'll probably reinforce it. We, we just don't know, but we'll find out. As for Astroth, let's keep him. On his toes, getting rid of these little turds. Like this. Lovely. Uh, one thing to note is that the, li the little uh, dwarven... Well, of course it's little, the dwarves. Uh, the dwarven party, which is going on here, uh, is moving towards Astroth, so we may need to keep an eye on that, just in case they do decide to carve themselves a little bit of a demon barbecue at some point. Uh, Raxus, we were sending you back because one of you possessed is looking a bit scullified there, so let's do... Nope, we don't want to dismiss him. <laughs> uh, he does have, does have some XP, so that's fine. So let's resurrect him. Because sometimes if they don't have XP... Um, yeah, sometimes if they don't have any XP and they're a basic unit, it is cheaper to dismiss them. Well, not so much cheaper, but more efficient to more efficient to dismiss them and then hide them again as you then get a fully healed unit which is exactly the same uh, what are we doing with Raxus though I feel as if I should be utilizing him to get rid of some of these guys around here yes indeed of course um, so I think probably gonna start off with these guys because um, we can concentrate very much on the zombie uh, yeah let's do that Kia Sinestra. Kia Sinestra indeed. Come on. So let's get 
let's just go for it. Balls out. Let's see what those do. Th th these two dudes will concentrate the fire on one person. That's for sure. And they're going to have a hard time, of course. So we're definitely going to lose one possessed. Which is not too bad. He might even be able to kill this zombie. No, of course not. <laughs> I expected far too much of him. Is that zombie going to go for the top one? Fantastic. That's just what we need because now the zombie's dead and the Templar has no way of getting to that possessed. Uh, obviously, Raxus can now damage him because his ward's been removed. Could have potentially got this possessed to defend, but meh, I'm not too bothered. He might get another hit now. He doesn't. But the question is, will this possessed get a chance to... Now I'm going to play it safe and get him to defend. That's fine, because he would have took a lot more damage anyway, because he wouldn't have died. That's good. There we go. And fantastic, we get a couple of levels up, which made all the damage that they um, infl that had inflicted to them uh, completely negligible. Enchanted units will receive 10% less damage from attacks. That's not too bad. That went very well. Very happy with that. Thank you, Raxus. Now, I think we do have another gold mine floating around somewhere. Was it over? Yes. I'm going to risk it for a biscuit. Let's do it. You move up there. And I think we're just about done. So let's end our turn and not skip the auto saving and all that bollocks because I have a, a question to answer. Yes, um, a and a question which was posed to me on my last video through through the, through the, uh, the comments. Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, through from ICIC, I believe his name is pronounced. I've probably embarrassed myself by saying that, but he or she, I, I should apologise. Yes, it could be either. You never know. Uh, who asked if I was to develop or, you know, help or whatever with a, a new Disciples game, what would I add or change? Uh, I'll discuss this through the, the enemy turns um, because I've got a reasonable amount of stuff to go on about. Um, first thing, I would probably introduce a lot more, uh, a much more diverse upgrade tree. Uh, reason being is because from Disciples 2 to 3, each race didn't receive any new units, as far as I'm aware, in terms of introducing completely new ones, in terms of you know new upgrade paths, branches, um, additions at the end, you know higher tiers. So I would start with something along those kind of lines, kind of the the additions, kind of one of the lines the additions you got from in Disciples Two, in comparison to Disciples One. So that's enough <laughs> for that kind of uh, enemy turn. Oh, there's more to come, don't worry. <laughs> don't want to disappoint you all. Um, you know what? I think I might just go for it with Mango in this city. Let's grab Salonia. Who's going to be there? <laughs> wow. Oh, I, I kind of feel sorry for him now, to be honest. Off he pops. See you later. That was the biggest anticlimax I think I've ever witnessed in one of my videos. There we go. The city of Salonia is ours, master. Yeah, with, with an equally anticlimactic uh, victory speech there as well. Lordy. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, I don't know what to do now. I was gearing myself up for an epic battle and... was uh, just provided with a, a lonely apprentice. Come on, Raxus, let's get you back. Uh, let's resurrect this guy. Does he have any experience? He does. Yeah, he's ready to level up, so it's worthwhile doing this. I might as well do this as well. Stick the Berserker in the middle. And... Zombies at the top and bottom and ghosts. Ah, the ghosts are going to be a problem. That's the thing. I think that's going to be a bit too much at the moment. These two little douchebags are looking much more doable. So let's go for it. So, let's concentrate on the middle one. Exactly, that's what I was hoping to happen. If he went first, he's obviously going to go for the possessed because it's the weakest unit there. So, that will prove very useful for us. He's having another go. This is not good. You're going to have to defend now, my friend. I... 
Well, yeah, let's get rid of them. Might as well. For all we know, Raxus could miss. And then we'd end up in more bother. Are you going to come out unscathed and with no deaths? Yes. Woo, even in level up for Raxus. Lovely stuff. And full line of berserkers on the front there. Super. You can carry on. See no reason why not. The uh, Pegasus Knight just seemed to completely ignore you, so I'm going to take advantage of that fully. And... Should I kill him? Should I? Hmm, or shouldn't I? He did come out of this city, so he's obviously no threat to, to us. So let's do it anyway. Yeah, that was pretty much what I was expecting. Um, he's going to try and run, but I think we can take care of it. He's defending, so let's see if we can take down the leader. I think we probably can, so I think we can just automatically resolve. Marvellous. I think you'll find it can be, my friend. Astroth, what's going on with you? We've got a thief. And these little guys have got a little closer as well. Oh, sorry, I keep on calling them little guys. It's terribly racist of me. Anyway, time to get rid of this little guy. Bah! -ha -ha. There he goes. Off you pop. Thank you. And... Hmm. Let's bring Astroth... I might just leave Astroth there, to be honest. Because I think this guy won't have enough movement points to uh, take him on. So at least we'd only have to take on one group of the little... Stumpy gets. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, I think we're done for now, so let's end our turn once again. And I'll move on to another thing that I will probably introduce, which is to make the, the battles a little bit easier. Well, not easier, but uh, a little bit more exciting. I don't know why I said easy. I'm stupid. Um, I would have multiple sided battles. Now, this is probably something that you would have to implement on a kind of um, scripted battle basis, but you know, we've got four races here, well, four main races, five main races, sorry, with the elves, which don't like themselves, don't like each other a, a great deal. And, it, you know, it's going to be inevitable that you're going to have more than one race uh, having a bit of a, an old uh, boozy do and fighting uh, with each other. So I'd like to introduce something along those kind of lines with multiple sides to conflict. I would, I personally, I would go back to the original type of fighting that we have uh, in Disciples 2. Disciples 3 was uh, a very, very, very big move away from the normal type of battles that we have in Disciples 2. Uh, very much like um, Heroes of Might and Magic, as I'm sure you'll, you'll hear if you look at any kind of review on Disciples 3. So that's another thing that I would introduce just to make things a little bit more flavorful and exciting. Um, but let's move on. Uh, probably just go with Pathfinding for Raxus. Oh, hello. Oh god, not Astroth again. <laughs> Bear with me. You are not my true master. I will rely on my own powers to survive. Now I am free from this clan's trap. No one can stop my influence from spreading. Ugh, rip my voice. Oh, it's a witch. Astroth is out of control. How can we fight him? Flee! Oh my god, it's a good job we just plonked him on that little um, island there because, you know, Astroth has just gone completely apeshit and changed his banner, which apparently means he's gone evil. More evil, should I say. Even more evil than Bethrazen. Let's have a look, see what's going on here. Uh, that just looks like a whole lot of death. As does that. I don't think there's anything else really we could do here, to be honest. It was just looking... Ugh. No. So much no. We need to send Raxus somewhere, though. Um, tell you what. Nah. It's still not going to be enough. Let's move him around. Let's put him hot on the heels of this uh, rod planter. And then I think we can probably just um, get him grinding out against those orcs. Not sexually, of course. That would be awful. No one wants to grind up against an orc. There's a nice bit of gold for us. Thank you very much. And you know what? I'm not, I'm not overly bothered about the, the giants taking over Salonia. Because at least I know exactly what's going to be there. Because we can just simply do this. I don't think the Empire is going to go for it. So 
I'm quite happy for that, for them to just stay there and just chill out. I might turn Mango's sights more towards this kind of area. Can't quite remember what was in that abandoned temple. Let's have a quick look, shall we? Oh my god, I've not even researched the spell. What an imbecile. Encantari Hellhound, thank you very much, my dis disposable, flexible friend with three heads. Here he is. I'm pretty sure I've been in here before, but I honestly can't remember what was in here. So let's have a quick look. And. Uh, the men of the lizard. He's obviously dead. Uh, Medusa is probably going to be the thing to worry about. That petrify spell is nasty. Can we kill her though before she gets to go? Raxus. Sorry, not Raxus. Mango does about 66 damage. I think we probably can, provided they both hit. So that's doable and will be a nice uh, source of extra goldage. So I'm going to make my make my way over there. Probably kill some of these guys on the way, actually. Let's get rid of him. He's looking a bit too pleased with himself there. Come on. Let's have a... Yeah. And... Well, Demonologist should hopefully be able to take out the Initiate in one turn. It all depends on the uh, turn order, of course. Let's see what happens. Will he get to go first? No. Initiate's going. And... Lovely. That uh, reduces the damage considerably by getting rid of that Demonologist. Doomdrake, sadly, is still going to take a turn. Uh, not a giant amount of damage. It's obviously not great, but yeah, we've been through worse. And we've got ourselves a Moloch. There he is. Uh, so... We need to start thinking very heavily about uh, upgrade structures, don't we? If only we had the gold to do so, which is a bit sad. Did we did get that valuable relic? Uh, is it called a valuable relic? I don't think it is. Uh, ancient relic, which is valuable. <laughs> I do apologise. I'm going to get uh, the wrong, completely the wrong way around. So we can sell that for you know a decent amount of money. So we'll end our turn now. I'll talk about yet another thing that I would introduce in Disciples, which is... Uh, now, I don't want to, to focus in too much on this because it does force you down a particular path, but I would like to see something along the lines of unit combos. Um, for anyone familiar with... Oh, bollocks. Not not anyone familiar with bollocks, of course. Uh, that's what I speak most of the time, so you're all very familiar with that. Uh, for anyone familiar with uh, the good old uh, legend that is Chrono Trigger on the SNES, you'll know what I'm talking about in terms of when two characters come together for like a combo attack. I uh, can't remember what it's called. I think it's probably just called a combo attack, to be honest. Uh, uh, I would introduce something like that in Disciples. Um, for instance, I don't know, maybe the demolo demonologist would enchant the uh, Berserker's axes to do fire damage based on uh, but an increased amount of damage and the, the sorcerer's fire. So just to give you a little bit more flexibility there, but not necessarily flexibility within the units themselves, but the combinations of them. I'd like to see something like that. That would be nice. Uh, one other thing would be, again, taking an idea from somewhere else, uh, this time StarCraft, which I'm a, a big fan of, uh, in particular StarCraft 2, um, would be unit transformations. Would be something uh, something along the lines of taking a unit, for instance, like a, I don't know, like an Arc Lich or something like that, and then doing something along the, side, the lines of a, a side quest to up, up, transform that particular unit into something else which is permanent, but obviously mutually exclusive. That would also be cool. Um, oh, sorry, that's the end of the turn. I think I've pretty much covered all the stuff that I would probably introduce. The, the, the main thing's off the top of my head anyway, just to make things obviously more interesting. I'm not really one for reinventing the wheel in terms of these kind of things. Um, I'm a very um, fond user of the term, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, and I don't think Disciples is broke at all. I mean, we just wanted more of it, didn't we, my fellow fanboys? And that's unfortunately not what we got, really, with Disciples 3, which was a little bit sad. Anyway, I'm going to have to leave things here, because I've waffled on throughout the, the enemy turns. That's normally what I skip out, and to be fair, as you've, as you've seen, this is a this episode is a prime example. That can take up uh, a good few minutes of each episode, which is why I took the decision to just remove those completely. Especially with that autosave feature taking um, more and more time every, t every, every turn. 
if you see what I mean. So let's leave things here. Uh, I bubbled on enough. I hope you're uh, at least a little bit satisfied that, with that answer, Mr. Uh, Mr. Icy person. And <laughs> anyway, yes, let's leave things here. I'll see you in the next episode of Disciples 2. See you then, questers. Ta-ta.